my name is Robert Lewis, and I will be discussing uh, Chapter 4 in the uh, Business Communication 360 book, uh, The Writing Process. And uh, to begin, we're going to start with the standard email format. Uh, so as you can see, we have your uh, address line, the two line, to where you're sending your information to, because the information can't be sent without a sender. And uh, we have your subject line, so what your email is actually going to be about, what it composes. And, um, with the body of it, as you see where it says, hi, Tony, um, from that point in the next paragraph is double spaced. Rather than single space, how the body of paragraph is, uh, just to show separation of organization, as well as this uh, starting paragraph right here, as long as this, uh, the sincerely notes. And a couple of key terms for you right here, uh, but uh, the main terms I feel like are important in the uh, writing process is uh, the audience analysis, uh, brainstorming, uh, the, uh, free writing, mind mapping, uh, revising, and the writer's block. So with audience analysis, that's, you know, that's what the writers uh, have to do to see exactly what the audience, you know, needs to reflect from the message his or her is trying to give. Uh, and with brainstorming, that's basically just jotting down ideas so you know you can have an idea on what you want to write about so you just don't uh, start off writing and have a blank mind. And mind mapping is just like brainstorming except you know it's a more of a graphical image uh, while brainstorming is like a little formal bullet points maybe or a couple of sentences. And uh, with your free write, that's what writers usually do to open their minds up before they actually start writing to get their words flowing and their minds fluctuated. And um, free writing also helps with the writer's block because that writer block really is like a, a literally block in the mind of a writer to stop all flow of imagination and creativity uh, to flow from their pencil to their paper and revising because you don't want your paper to have you know, 10 or 100, you know, grammar, uh, you know, marks and punctuation errors. So like I was saying, we're revising right here, we got proofreading. So at number one, in April 31, 2007, that 31 should have a 31st, because that's the proper grammar uh, punctuation mark for that. And uh, as you can see, well, with number two, it's missing an A after the N in manager. Um, as well as right here, uh, dear Mr. Thomas, semicolon. Uh, that semicolon is actually supposed to be a comma uh, when you're addressing a, uh, the title of a person's name. And uh, to continue on, a couple of more, you know, proofreading errors, which, you know, makes, you know, revising a very critical step in the writing process. Like, just simple, simple mistakes, you know, the S is posted before the K, and uh, one is one L and always, and one R and prepare, uh, stuff like that. And uh, the O and the I should be switched around from avoid. Uh, so just a couple of mistakes that you know should be you know just just look over before you know you turn your paper in or a presentation at that because that's just it's not professional to a business mindset. Okay, and. So, a more proofreading. See, proofreading is a lot for Artie Slav because you know, this is a really very important. Like, a simple R makes the whole sentence look. Would you be willing to try this out on you own? That's not proper. That's not a proper sentence. That's that's actually a sentence fragment. It should be an R on that uh, your. And um, as well as uh, sincerely your, it should be. A comma and yeah, a lowercase y. And that capital yours should not be a capital right there. Uh, yep. And uh, just a couple of sentences to uh, just to see. Uh, anybody like to read the first sentence and see what? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right here in the front. You go ahead. Okay. So they're they're too busy with their report to be there for the hearing. So there should be they are, so they are too busy for their, and that should be T-H-E-I-R. And report to be there for the hearing, meaning there, the location, that's T-H-E-R-E -E there. So just, you know, uh, just a 
the those are basically just synonyms and you know? those words you know are basically they're called homophones which are words that all sound the same but have different meanings so it is kind of confusing to uh tell the difference but you know in the writing process you have to be able to distribute you know what's the difference between each and as you can see number five uh how much farther can we pursue this if it's not passed on through regular channels now this is supposed to be how much further uh, with the U instead of the A, and um, that it should have a comma after the S, because it's more like it is not instead of it's not. And that past is saying like, talking about the past and the future, rather than P-A-S-S-E-B, past means ongoing, continuing. So uh, that's the, uh, the errors in those sentences. and. Um, here are the answers below, like I said, number one, with the uh, comma, uh, R-E, and the uh, I-R for there, and the R-E for that one. And down here, I'm talking about the further with the U, and the comma for, you know, it's turned into it is with that uh, apostrophe and past the regular right there. And um, this is basically the one sentence summary. Basically, is a sentence that summarizes everything you need to ask and everything you need to mean, you know, who, does what, whom, when, where, and how. And it's basically, it's, it's putting it together instead of asking multiple sentences uh, for the same uh, result, basically. And um, that concludes my presentation class. I'm glad you guys paid attention. I hope you guys learned something from my lesson. And again, this is chapter four of the writing lesson. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day.